My earliest memory is riding in my grandfather's boat, arm over the side, hand in the spray. I've spent much of the rest of my life chasing this feeling. All of that has led to this. The Wooden Boat Experience. Oh, speckles. Can I talk to these people first? No, you're all money. Stop. So it's Wednesday night. Speckles and I just got done working. Just installed this. The 5200 still wet. There's still a lot of work to do. It's got to be trimmed up there, cleaned up. But this is far more than I was expecting to do at the beginning of this week. And I think anybody that's been watching is probably a little bit surprised to see a new piece of wood all the way down into here. But you're going to see how that all came about in this week's episode. This is cool. This just came, the UPS guy came while I was in here working. And this bubble wrap out of the way. It's the new sticker, which I didn't think was gonna be here for a while. Hand in the spray. Thanks to Kenny and Brittany, who helped with the design. Kenny and Brittany are behind the scenes. You don't see them and they don't live anywhere near here. But um, they're the reason that this sticker came about. So that was kind of cool to get some of those. Some more uh, tape, because we've been going through that for both the wooden boat experience and for Glasgow. So, Patreon members, you're going to be seeing a new sticker real soon. And that brings me to how cool it is, how many people have been supporting this channel. And don't think that to support this channel you have to give me money or become a Patreon member or whatever. It's great if you just watch these videos, subscribe to them, hit the notification bell which is next to the subscribe button and that lets you know about all, it notifies you about all the videos that we put out and as you know today is not only this video but it's going to be the first video of the virtual tour of the Antique Boat Museum and it's the uh, speed building, the quest for speed building. So you get two videos today, you get two videos every week in May so that's four more times so double the videos for me, so that's cool. But back to the support. You can do, like I said, subscribe and everything. You can become a Patreon member, or just commenting, or sending me a letter like the letters that are up on the transom, anything like that, saying hi to me. Somebody I was filming in Clayton one day and somebody said, hey, aren't you the uh, glass goat guy? And I was like, yeah. Anything like that makes me want to keep doing this and providing good content for you guys. So. Um, thank you and one last thing before we get started you're gonna see today that I use this plane a lot this hand plane and if you're working on boats and you don't have a couple of decent hand planes well you're really shortchanging yourself now this is nothing special I found this in a little antique shop in uh, Canada you can see that there's a big chip out of the side here it's an old Stanley number 60 and a half it's nothing special it's it's just a regular plane the regular little hand plane but it's very sharp I did some work on the blade I've got that sharpened up really well and that other plane that I have is probably close to hundred years old the bigger one that I use it works just fine I also found that all rusted up in an antique shop bought it really cheap because it wasn't one of the pretty ones and sharpened it up and I use it constantly and this will do a lot of things quickly that you aren't going to be able to do easily with a machine safely you can do it with a machine but the hand plane's a thing to do and here's a i almost fell into the camera so you're going to see this this is a little piece of scarfed plywood that i'm gonna you're gonna see me make later in the episode but i'm not putting it on until next week but um this was all done with a jigsaw and this hand plane you don't have to have fancy tools to do what I'm doing here. I don't have fancy tools, but I've got some decent versions that don't look pretty but work well of old tools. And that's what I use most of the time. So I'm glad you're here. I'm glad that this is, this part's in, not trimmed, but in. This part's got to be taken out one more time. You're going to see that in a little while. Um, we got to add something to that. But we are moving right along, and a lot of stripping got done on the other side. You can't see that right here. So, welcome to the wooden boat experience. Speckles, I know you want to go play ball outside, so let's go do that, okay, buddy? Got a nice letter in the mail from 
Dave Marshall, and we're gonna and a photo too. We're gonna put that up along with one we got a while ago from my buddy Howard, which I forgot to put up last time I was doing this. Howard and Cheryl sent me this letter quite a while ago. Really planning to get going on the motor soon. It's only Saturday today. Yesterday the video came out. Episode 32. But I haven't been able to start the motor because I haven't gotten this from my son, Toby, yet. But he made me this carburetor plate, this adapter plate. He is a tool and die maker. This carb is a little dirty, but we'll clean that up. First I had to assemble the pieces, so I had the proper profile to copy. After tracing onto a new piece of white oak, I began cutting it out. I definitely need to add a wood vise to the side of this bench. I found it easier to create the rabbit using the large chisel while constantly comparing it to what was left of the original piece. Well, it's pretty well roughed out. We'll have to put it in place in the boat to see just what changes we need to make here. but. I don't think it's too bad. Probably got to take a little bit down on these two sides, but I figured leave a little bit extra. As we know, it's a lot easier to take stuff off than it is to put stuff back on. I wish this knot wasn't here, but truthfully, this was supposed to go like that. I don't have the tools to cut that out. I don't have a bandsaw here. I got to get one of those. But, uh, I may cut that out afterwards. I may just epoxy that in. This is a nice heavy area. I'm not gonna really ab worry about that little piece there. This is made out of white oak. The original was mahogany. So this is certainly a stronger board than the original was. Sunday felt kind of lazy. So it was time for more stripping. Are you ready? Nice one. Hey, put it right here. Thank you. Short one. Nice. Hey, put it here. Thanks. I'm gonna hold this by hand because of the spot I'm in, but I really wanna show you guys something. So I'm, I'm pulling out the plug here that's made out of some type of fairing compound. And I have found that almost without fail, as I pull this out of these, and you can see that I'm re-fastening all this through here. These frames, these three, not this one, this one I replaced um, part of it, but these three frames, flames, <coughs> frames are original. And what came out of them are these number eights, one and a quarter long. And every single one of these, when I pull this plug out and when I clean this out, um, are loose. Now this one didn't turn when I um, was picking the stuff out, but most of them do, they're that loose. So if I come in here and take this out, this is probably the tightest one that I've found, where I'm actually using the screwdriver. Most of them, if I could have gotten my fingers on the head, I would have been able to just turn them out by hand. Going back in with a countersink, and this is a number 10 countersink, and the screws that we're gonna put in, I'll grab one from here, are these number 10, still the same length. I'm not changing the length. They're one and a quarter. 
but they're number 10s. We got a nice clean countersink here. We're gonna put this in and instead of a loose number eight screw, which is not doing much, we have a nice tight number 10. And that's why I'm refastening this whole thing. Every bit of this, you can see there's screws here, then there's four rivets, and then there's screws. I'm gonna refasten every single one of those. And I think it's worth doing because truthfully, the number eights that were there originally, and it's not because the ribs are rotted out, it's just because there's been swelling and drying and swelling and drying for 60 years. And that's what happens. Things loosen up. Well, as soon as it's warmer at night, we'll deal with this section of the keel back here. And I'll explain later what I'm gonna do about that. But it's interesting when you start to strip a boat and really look at a boat, all the neat things that come up and the little clues to strange things that happened in the past. So here you can see that it looks to me like somehow the prop came down and was hitting into the keel and dug out a big groove here. And there's some other clues to this. And let me go grab the strut. So here's the strut. It's not too bad in the back here. It's a little bent here in the corner. It's definitely something weird happening right here. But as you can see, somebody used, I think this is just a piece of a wedge that you used um, to shim things in a house. It's cedar, I guess it's uh, good stuff as far as rot resistant. And there's some what looks like maybe 4,200 in here. But I'll see if I can straighten the strut out. And um, obviously it needs a new cutlass bearing in there. So we'll get one of those. But I do have another strut that might work if I can't straighten these corners out. And you can see it's sunk down in here. So we're gonna make sure that that's flat before we do anything as well. So just another little interesting tidbit in the life of Unbeknownst. Okay, so this piece obviously goes inside, but it goes right here. So I'm gonna get inside and try to push this up through and see how it fits. And then if it does fit, we will get on to the next stage of making the cardboard template for this piece. Well, I'd say that this angle needs to be adjusted a little bit here at the end, but in farther it looks okay. So we gotta take a little bit off right there, but that one looks pretty good. Maybe just a touch more there. I'd say the fit is not bad there. And we haven't bolted these two together through here yet, which is gonna pull this down and close that gap up some. I explained the next section on these videos, but the camera was set on time-lapse. After cleaning and repairing the bow area, I found what I think is a bad design by Chris Craft. They added a thin strip on each side of the main section, which creates a knife edge area that traps dirt and water, and it is impossible to clean. This new angle I'm creating will accomplish several things. I will be able to clean this area easily, water shouldn't normally sit there, and I will have a larger surface area to attach the garboard plank to. I will create these pieces and add them on next week and then install the whole thing. Okay, why are we making a cardboard template for this section when we didn't make one for this section? Well, other than having to nail this piece to this so I could measure it, this section isn't terrible. This is still the proper profile. Everything's still here. I had already taken some of this off, but that does, this measurement doesn't really matter that much. I can make that be whatever I want it to be. So I could measure this. I could set this on top and even trace it. Now here's how this piece fits in with this one. Sorry, like that. So you can see this whole section from here to here is missing. This is where I cut it out down here. This is just a disaster. Now, can I take a few measurements off here? Yes. But is it gonna help me that much? I don't know. Um, I can just make a cardboard template. So that's what we're gonna do right now. You've seen me turn this into a new piece. Now I'm gonna turn this into a new piece. You can't make a cardboard template without cardboard, but technically, 
This is Corrigan. Okay, we have three areas here that aren't changeable that we need to match up to. One is the flat spot in here on this piece I built. The other is this curve. And the last one is this new scarf that we created here. So the first thing I wanna do is put some cardboard here and put some cardboard here, but I need that cardboard to match up to this profile and this profile exactly. So I'm gonna, this profile is fairly easy for me to do. It's just got a little curve up here, but this one's more difficult. I can't reach it very well from in there. So I am gonna put this tool on here, push down, hopefully. and get this profile. Easier said than done. That is not what you want to do. Okay, so that's roughly that profile and we can work with that. I just knocked some of these pieces of metal right out of this tool. I didn't even know that was possible. I have to fix that later. I kind of want to keep this template flat this way, like the actual piece of wood is going to be. I'm going to use a little push pin to hold it in place there. And there. Okay, hey, that gives us that profile right here. So we'll cut that into the piece of corrugate. Okay, so now we got this bottom piece is on where that scarf is. This piece is matching up to the piece that we made. We're gonna tape the two together. And you really want a tape that's real, not gonna let loose something really aggressive with the adhesive. Make sure it's still in place there, still in place down there. Pinch these together. Draw this profile on here. Any reference point you can get is helpful. So certainly it's not super sturdy yet. We're gonna add another piece of corrugate against here and kind of fish plate it and then we can get rid of that pin. Would be helpful to have another person when you're doing this. And don't worry about if this isn't perfect or this isn't perfect, you can always add another piece of cardboard onto it and tape it on and make it perfect. All we care about is the line that this corrugate is going to form inside of here to make the piece. The line inside, the profile outside, and we will have the information that we need. We can get the width and the angles and everything later on. Extra tape is a good idea because sometimes they seem really tied together until you take them out of the position where this is holding in place because of resting against the wood and they sort of pivot on you a little bit. So I'll put a piece here. Here is the plywood. This is the bad line that we had before, but this tells me where this surface is, and this tells me where this surface is. So we've got a lot of information right there. And now we can start to decide how are we going to shape the inside of this, the part that's going to come down and bolt down here and um, I'm going to mess with that a little bit right now and cut it up and then I'll bring it back. Okay so any information it's helpful. So here's the piece that we already made a new one of and this profile matches that one really close. So I'm going to put my template against where this would be. What I'm looking for is this information out here. How far out was this part? Because it seems to me it's wider and then it tapers down. So I want it to look like the original. Lots of double checking in this process. Now I probably could just draw this in. 
there's nothing better than a nice flexible piece skinny piece of wood to form a nice fair line so we're gonna adjust this to match what we got here we're gonna need a little more help here again if you had somebody here with you this wouldn't be that hard there's always a way to figure it out so the rabbit the center of the rabbit has to be on this line right here this is the piece inside that we messed with the scarf and here's where the piece that we made comes in the stem of that comes in or the outside profile and this is where we're going to bolt through right here here and through here all right we're not in bad shape there now to transfer this to wood we're going to go on the inside and take a look at what we've done and make sure that we're not totally missing something because we're on the outside here looking in don't want that twisting too much that ought to work but you can see that's nice and fair that's how it's supposed to look got a little bit extra here but once we put the piece in something like that can just be planed off and it might be actually might need to straighten out a little bit here looks to me like it goes in and up but all that can be fared out here with a hand plane okay if we look at it from in here it's not bad but what we do need to do is right here this needs to be a little bit longer and there's a little gap here but what we can do is take a piece of corrugate put it right against there tape it in place and then we'll know that that is exact so I might not want a longer one anyway but that's going to really help us tell what this should do down here I really want this to come to about here so we got to add a little bit to that so I'll do that right now okay now I've got a lot of information up here where the piece is the new piece that I built I know where that ends now that's what that piece of card of corrugate does there the next piece down is telling me where that new piece is going through these two frame pieces and at what angle. And then down here, I now know the true angle of where the scarf is. And it's telling me, you see the pencil line, that's where I want it to end. So I know how to build this piece now just from using some corrugate, some tape and a few other items. And I'm pretty confident that much like this one up here went in and literally needed to fit in it needed no adjustments it needs a little bit of angle adjustment where the um the garbage strake meets it but that's just a hand plane for a minute i've got it marked and i'm confident that the new the shape of the new one the profile is going to be good a little bit harder because the when I built this one, I was able to measure where that rabbit was exactly. On this one, it's going to be a little bit more difficult, but I can put a nail through the pencil line that I've marked. So I'll show you how to do that, and that'll give me the information that I need. Then I just got to measure the angles and make sure those are right. Okay, so there's the template sitting in place. You can see it's still a little awkward right here, but you notice I've put plus eighth of an inch just on this end to bring that out. And then we will shape this with a plane later on. Also, I'm seeing a little bit of light through here. So I've got a plus sign here to add a little bit to that curve. And those are just mental notes to myself. Uh, I'm going to let this remain proud a little bit here. And we'll take that off when we smooth it out. Well, luckily... This Forstner bit has a very close radius to this spot right here. Okay, now on the stem, these two sides, these two edges get cut off to make it come to a kind of a flat point. And I'm using this flexible board 
I cut off something I was working on the other day, a piece of black walnut. I, it's important that I have this end and this end be in the right place. So when I put it on the other piece, it's nice and continuous. But in between, I want it to look good. So I just want a nice straight line in between. Okay, I see how it's got to slide in. It's too hard to put it in this way. Well, maybe if we spread this top, it's possible. It's possible. May never come out again. I think it's hitting those frame pieces in there. I'm going to go in and check. So my eye was telling me one thing and the measurements were telling me another. But my eye was right. This rabbit actually needs to come to this line. And we need to take a little bit off up here which I thought maybe was going to happen. But um, it's to be expected, and I'd rather have it a little long than too short. So let's fix the rabbit first. Well, we've got to fiddle with it some. Especially that joint right there, but... It's not a big deal. We just got to shave a little bit off of this one. And we've got to adjust the end of the strake a little bit here. Maybe shave that rabbit a touch. This was already messed up, this piece. But when we draw that in, it won't be as bad. It's got to be bolted down. See what it acts like when it's tight. It's pretty good, it just needs to be skinnier. This plywood is actually just a little bit thicker than the plywood that's on the boat, so we gotta take almost the whole layer off on the inside. One thing I don't want is I don't want this sitting proud of the original. I don't wanna have to plane this off afterwards on the outside. Okay, we got a nice coat here to bed this in. We've taken care of the spots where the strakes were separated just at the ends. We got some 5200 in there. We are going to pull this back out later and do some work on that so we're not going to put any sealer here right now. We're going to try and get this in place and close and then put the rest of the 5200 on. This kind of pinches it so we can get it pretty close and then slide it down. Probably could have used some white 5200, but this mahogany was already open and had been for a while, so I want to get it used up before I have a problem with it. That side's got quite a bit on it. Now to the other side. Okay, no sense in messing around. Let's put it in.
this is not the way that I normally do this kind of stuff. But screwing all these in by hand, the way my wrists have been feeling lately, is not what I want to do. These screws have already been in all these holes once. They've been waxed. And I am not going to seat them all the way with this. I'm just going to get them in most of the way. I've got quite a bit of control with this drill on number one. I can go pretty slow. Wow, <laughs> that was quite an ordeal for me doing the work, and for you, if you're still here after this long. If you are still watching, send me a self-addressed stamped envelope, and I'll send you back a Wooden Boat Experience sticker. Don't forget to check out those ABM virtual tour videos starting this week, and I'll see you next week.